Good morning, everybody. I'm going to present you with some material referring to clauses, so many in one, and couldn't shoot. Let's just start with clauses. What are clauses? Clauses are a group of words that contains a subject and a verb, uh, which can be the predicate at the same time. Clauses can be independent and dependent. Let's start with independent clauses. What are independent clauses? Um, there are clauses that can't stand on its own by themselves. What does it mean? It means they have their own meaning. They do not need to be joined to any other clauses. They contain all the information necessary to be a complete sentence. Independent clauses have three components. Subject, which is the element that the sentence is about, actions and predicate, which is talking about what the subject is doing, and they both together express a complete thought, something that happened or was said with a complete sense again. For example, today is Thursday, and it is is on Friday. She interviewed for three jobs, that is an independent clause, but she really wants to work here. We all looked very tired, for we had stayed up all night cramming from the finals. Independent clauses can be as simple as a subject and a verb. For example, Jim reads. Jim is the subject, reads is the action. But Jim reads is a complete thought. Everybody understand if we said Jim reads. Independent clauses can be together because they are related. For example, we have Jim read a book. He really enjoyed that book. The first clause is an independent clause. Jim read a book. Jim is the subject. Read is the action. Book is the object. The second clause, he really enjoyed the book, is an independent clause as well. He is the subject, enjoyed is the action, the book is the object. They are both independent. They are together because they are related to each other. Let's talk about dependent clauses now. What are dependent clauses? They groups of words with a subject and a verb. They do not express a complete thought. They are not sentences. They can stand alone. They can't stand alone. They can come at the beginning or at the end of a sentence. And it is necessary to put a comma after a dependent clause only when it comes at the beginning of a sentence. And these clauses can be adverb clauses, adjective clauses, and noun clauses. Here we have some examples of dependent clauses. Because he has a college degree, he was given a great job. When the storm started, she was at the storm. Both were, were a code that I gave him. My friends, look at these examples, and it says in here, the underlined clauses cannot stand to face on it. They need another clause to help it make sense or to help it complete their thought. Yes, what does it mean? It means, if you just say it because he has a college degree, nobody is going to understand you. It needs another thought to complete this meaning or this sense because he has a college degree he was given a great job and here these examples have been written following the rules it says what are the rules it says we need a comma after a dependent close if there is at the beginning okay so here we have because he has a college degree comma he was given a great job. Now, my friends, let's focus on these adverb clauses of time. Okay? Um, what are the adverbs of time? 
after, when, until, soon, before, and the rest that we are here. What is an adverb? An adverb is a word that has a function and a sentence, and what is the function? It's to modify verbs, adjectives, or another verbs. Uh, we are talking about this before because we have examples in here of dependent clauses with time. He finally finished his novel after months of research. When the cloud strikes midnight, she was to she has to leave. Now we have here some information on some, any, and one. Some and any are used with countable and plural nouns. They are used for an amount which is not known. For example, do you have any crisps? We don't know the amount of crisps. Some. Some is used in affirmative sentence, offers, and in questions when you expect the answers yes. For example, I have some good ideas for the celebration. This is an affirmative sentence. I can bring some drinks. This is an offer. And would you like some sugar? Questions with yes answer. And any. Any is used in negative sentences and questions. Here we have some examples. I don't have any ideas. Do you have any ideas? No, we don't have any. And then we have one. Which plural is once. And uh, what that is this? This is a substitute of a countable noun. Here we have an example. It says, for example, would you like a cake? Yes, please, I will take one. One is replacing the cake. And uh, do you like these shoes? It says, yes, I like the black ones. Ones is replacing the shoes. So what we have in here are some examples or exercises and some any and the answers of these exercises. Now let's talk about the could and should. Let's start with could. Could is used to express an idea or an opinion without imposing one's judgment of what is right to do. Could, my friends, is a possibility or passability. Could is used to make suggestions and requests. Could commonly is used in conditional sentences and uh, it is the conditional of can. And it is often used for offering ideas as possible solutions. And could is express a weak degree of certainty. That means suggestions my friends here we have some examples with the occasions or situations when we use could extreme rain could cause the river flood this is a possibility nancy could escape like a pro when uh, she was 11 this is a possibility you could see a movie or go to the dinner that is a suggestion and could I use your computer to email my boss? This is a request. This, the requesters are asking for favors. And we could go on a trip if I didn't have to work this weekend. This is a conditional. Let's talk about should now. Should is commonly used to by the person who is uh, make the decision maker. It means the person who is in charge of say something. Make recommendations or give advice and it can also be used to express obligations as well as expectations. Examples. When you go to Berlin, you should visit the Palace of Potsdam. This is a recommendation. You should focus more on your family and less on your work. This is an advice. I really should be in the office by 7 a.m. This is an obligation. 
And by now they should already be in Dubai. This is an expectation. What I have written here is what is a, what is the meaning of every situation in here. What is a suggestion? A suggestion is a helpful idea, plan, or possibility that someone mentions. What is an advice? An advice is an option you give someone about what they should do, something with higher priority. What is a priority? A priority is an action or a thing that needs attention before anything else. Okay? An obligation. An obligation is something which is good or important to do. In obligation, we can use should and ought to. And here we have an example and it says everyone should wear seat belts. And probability is a logical or normal thing that is expected. For example, he should arrive soon. What is next, my friends, is um, exercises with should and could and the answers of them. My friends, I really hope that this information will, will be of any use for you. Remember, my friends, I always here to help you. Please don't hesitate and contact me if you need help on any topic. Thank you very much. Bye for now.